This is Doug D. Nero, and today I'm going to explain why you don't want a Land Rover Defender. I'm not talking about the new Land Rover Defender. You might want one of those. It's pretty good. I have one. It's great. Oh, but the old Defender. The Definitely do not want one of those, despite what you might think. Even though they look so cool, I think you don't want one. <laughs> Today, I'm going to explain why I think that and what I mean. Uh. Before I get started... Be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era. We've had some fantastic sales recently on... Cars and bids, including this 2002 Porsche 911, which sold for just under $30,000. This uh. gorgeous BMW M4 for around 2,000 miles that sold for $60,000, and this fantastic Nissan 300 ZX. <laughs> The X Turbo, which brought thirty five thousand dollars. If you're looking to sell your cool car from the modern era, the nineteen eighties and up, cars and bids is the place to do it. You'll get your auction listed quickly, and you'll get the most interesting views in your car. And if you're looking to buy a cool car from the modern era, check out Cars and Bids, where the daily auctions and. Great selection at carsandbids.com. Okay, so let me get started with a little better. I have this old Land Rover Defender. Uh. It's not that old, it's a 1997 model, but, you know, the design came from the... <laughs> so it feels old, and it looks old, and it looks kind of vintage. And vintage SUVs are really hot right now. It's like the hottest segment of the collector car market where everybody is gravitating towards. And so people see me driving this old land. I'm approached constantly, like. <laughs> <laughs> like every day, but I drive it. When people say, hey, I want that. Hey, where did you get that? Hey, what are those costs? Hey, are you interested in selling yours? You know? <laughs> I really, really want one of those cool Defender. Whoa, this is so neat, man. Yo, man. I love this thing. Well, can I get one? And, and uh, I'm constantly being approached. And, and I, I don't want to deter people from owning cool cars like that. But I think that the expectation will not match the reality for the vast majority of people who want one of these just because they think it looks cool. And so then, hey, I'm going to explain why you probably don't actually want an old Land Rover Defender, even... Uh. Thank you, thank you, dude. Okay, it's not the reason you don't want one. By the way, it's not just I have the North American spec Land Rover Defender, which was sold here for a few model years in the 90s. <laughs> it's not just those that are really hot right now. People are importing the Defenders. Like... Lazy from Europe, and they're flipping them for huge costs because the demand for American is just so hot. Like I said, vintage SUVs are hot, and that look, that like square, cool Defender look, it's just really, really in right now. Everybody seems to want it. And so these Defenders are just, people, Americans in particularly right now, cannot seem to get enough of these Defenders, so... Uh. To get enough of these Defenders. <laughs> cannot seem to get enough of these Defenders. So. Basic reason I always tell people when they approach me uh. why they don't want a land over defender is <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sucks. Like it is not good to drive. It, it is incredibly rough. Especially tremendously rough over bumps. It is not comfortable. It's really loud. You hear the engine, the suspension, the tires, the road noise, the wind noise, everything. You can't hear that well inside it. The real passengers are always telling me they can't hear what's being said in the front, and we're talking about a distance of this. So, um, it's just like water always gets in. Mine's a soft top. Even if you have a full soft top on, water will leak in when it's... Uh. 
I find it that people see the Land Rover back and, and they own, the kind of people who like want to buy in the center because it looks cool, they, have, they own like a new Range Rover or like a new Discovery. And they'll come up and say, oh, this is a Land Rover, but it looks like an old Jeep. Rover, but it has the look of an old Jeep. And what I tell people is, no, that's not what it has the look of an old Jeep, but it drives worse than an old Jeep. <laughs> it drives like a tractor. And so it's actually worse than what you're thinking. I think people are, they see them. Oh. And rubber bags, and they think this is some premium offering that will, you know, eradicate the flaws of the old Jeep and still provide you with this Land Rover experience. And that ain't true. At the end of the day, it's just an old truck, and it drives like what it is. The old truck, what? <laughs> the rebels are not the bus. And it drives like what it is. The old truck. Lots of rattles, uh, lots of bumps. <laughs> and I know people who have bought these old defenders and they have spent tens of thousands of dollars. <sighs> To remove that trucky feel from it. People will wrap the interior in beautiful quilted leather. They'll put in a touch screen. They'll change out the seats and make it nicer. They'll put in a sound. <laughs> a thing material called Dynamat to try to get rid of all the road noise. They'll change the suspension, the tires. They'll try to improve everything in the ultimate pursuit of just making it nice. And the truth is, you can't. There's no Change that. Uh, it still feels like an old truck, even after you spent. Some people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on like resto modded ones, the Chevy V8, the nice automatic transmission. <sighs> Still drives like a squeaky, rattly, rough and tumble old defender. And then there's the next issue that, that makes I think a lot of people should be avoiding defenders. <laughs> It is the reliability. When I bought my Defender, I was kind of terrified about the reliability issue. The truth is, it's actually been better than I expected, but it hasn't... ...been great. For one thing, it has stranded me twice. The front drive shaft snapped. One point, and I had to get towed. And also, at one point, the um, ignition the throttle cable uh, like broke, and I had to get it back in place with a... <sighs> on the side of the road, and so I drove around with the keychain holding the throttle cable in place until I could get it to a mechanic. To a mechanic. And... Well, this stuff happens when you own a Land Rover Defender. Like, it's a mention better than I thought, but it hasn't been great. And this is another thing I always tell people, you have to kind of be an enthusiast. <sighs> To own one of these in terms of the upkeep and the difficulty of ownership that's required. Like, this isn't going to be your new Range Rover where, yeah, well, Range Rover is so unreliable, but really a new one. <laughs> you take it to the dealer twice a year like any other car, you don't really have a lot of problems. The Defender is not going to be like that. Old Land Rover is an old vehicle. You've got to keep on top of everything. You have to constantly be servicing it, checking out stuff, making sure that everything is good. And I old stuff that's going to be cracking, breaking, aging, you know, drying out, snapping, and parts aren't always easy to find. You get a call from your mechanic sometimes and hey, we don't, we don't have this. <laughs> <laughs> the vendor is on the ground. <sighs> and, and someone who's wealthy and is used to just having stuff is like, what are you talking about? But that's a reality with these cars. You have to be ready to maintain it. And frankly, you have to be ready for it to strain you. That <laughs> I have it, and those are the kind of things that I think is more of an enthusiast thing rather than a like, oh, it looks cool, I want it kind of thing. And frankly, I think that's a big point to remember here. If you're an enthusiast, this sort of thing comes with the territory. I bought mine knowing full well that this sort of thing would happen. 
and uh, and what would happen from a reliability standpoint. But if you're a regular person who just thinks it looks cool and you want one, I suspect part of the fun will wear off very quickly once you realize that the level of attention and need. <laughs> that it requires that. Uh. Sort of stuff really requires someone who like loves it and wants it as an enthusiast thing, and not just someone who wants it because it looks cool. Well, you're just you're, it's going to start to wear off if it's strands you and if it requires a lot of upkeep and cost to. <laughs> People want it. And that's the third big issue I tell people why you maybe don't want a Defender, the general cost of it. I paid $63,000 for my Defender like four years ago. Uh, and mine is a North American set, Land of Defender, like I said, they're imported to North America. officially for a few years and I just got a massive premium over the foreign... Did, 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 did. ...the imported ones for a bunch of reasons, which I actually explained in a video a couple years ago. I'm going to link that in the description. <sighs> Below, you can see the differences between the defenders, but 63 grand for my truck to buy. I think it's now worth maybe 80 to 85 based on where the market is. Things have gotten totally crazy with the. <laughs> yes, the defender market just completely out of hand. And so, not only is it unreliable and you have to pay to keep it going, but there's a price of admission that is increasingly becoming unaffordable for a lot of people. And even on the imported trucks, you don't get an NAS truck, the imported ones are also. I'm starting to see some crazy sales because the NAS have gotten so valuable that some more and more people are now kind of congregating around the important ones and they're not. Uh. to use it from like a drivability perspective and from like a general upkeep and maintenance perspective. So there you go. You don't really want an old Land Rover Defender. If you have listened to all of this, all of these caveats and drawbacks and owning a Defender and the idea of one still appeals to you. Then maybe you do want an old Land Rover Defender. Maybe you're the type of enthusiast that would benefit greatly from this. <sighs> If you know all of this stuff is a reality when you're going into it. But this video is important for me to do because I'm going to send it to everyone who emails me or reaches out or sends me a text or saying, hey, I want an old defender. I'm going to send them this video and say, This is maybe why you don't. Yes, it can be a lot of fun. I love the trucky driving experience, frankly, and I love the top down roof off enjoyment. And it's way more unique and more fun and like, more capable than like a jeep. But I'm also an enthusiast and I don't think that putting up with some of this stuff is a, is a bad thing in order to have the fun. But I suspect that isn't true for everybody. Some people are just like how it looks, think it's cool. You <laughs> be in for something when you actually get one. But maybe now people like that know a little bit more about what the Land Rover Defender experience will really be like. <sighs> This will be the end of this video. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>